Hey, I'm Ben. Today we're gonna do a valve cover gasket replacement. Valve covers do go bad on older cars and they're not a terribly difficult job to do. You just have to take off this cover, all the different hoses and accessories and scrape that old gasket off, put a new one in and bolt it all down in the right pattern. So we're gonna get right to it. Here are some of the tools you're gonna need for this job. We've got a socket to fit all the bolts on the valve cover, a ratchet to help get them loose. And since there are so many bolts, we'll have a speed wrench to make the process a little faster. We also have a scraper here and here to help get the old gunk off from the, the old gasket. We've got some cleaners over here to make that job easier. We also have a tube of RTV, which is a room temperature vulcanizing rubber in order to get into some of the crevices that the gasket can't quite get into on its own. I've also drawn up a template here for storing the bolts. Not all bolts are the same length on some cars, so it's a good practice to keep them in a good clean order so that if they're different lengths, you'll be able to put them back in the right place without any confusion. And I just have a Sharpie on hand in case I need to mark something up along the way. That's pretty much all you'll need on this job. It'll vary from job to job though. So the first thing we're going to do is pull off all the wires and hoses. We have a vacuum line here and this one should just pop right out like that. Flip that to the side. So our spark plug wires on this car are unequal length so you don't have to worry about numbering them. On a car that has equal length spark plug wires you'll want to somehow number them either with tape or with a white out marker. That way that you know which spark plug goes into which spark plug wire. So we'll just pull these off and also set these to the side. So now we've got full access to all the bolts and we'll grab our uh, socket and loosen these up. May be a, a good idea to hit some of these with a penetrating oil beforehand so that uh, you don't have to fight them. There's no particular order that you need to take these off with when you're removing the valve cover, so uh, just work front to back or side to side, whichever you prefer. All right, we're gonna switch to the speed wrench now to make the uh, full removal a little bit easier. You only do this job when the head starts to leak uh, and, and that's uh, very dependent on the engine. Some engines are notorious for leaking. Some engines stay tight as a drum. So we've got everything loosened up now. We're using this cardboard template to store everything, but you can also use one of these magnetic trays if all your bolts are the same size and they're really handy and they keep everything sort of out of the way. But this is working fine. We've got a nice set of bolts here that are mostly all the same. And obviously we pre-prepped this cardboard to hold everything in place. So before we pull the valve cover off, I want to point out just exactly where this one was leaking. Down here you see a lot of wet, dark, greasy stuff. Usually that's a good indication of where the oil is coming from, but if you want to pinpoint it, clean it off with some degreaser and then spray it down with some talcum powder. Run the engine a little bit and pretty soon you'll know exactly where that oil is coming from. All right, so now we're ready to pull the cover. This one's kind of coming off pretty easily, so we're going to pull it from the back. Be very careful not to mar anything. The offending area is up in here, actually. There's the rip. We'll have to replace that with a new one. All right, so we've got our valve off and on the table upside down. While you start this, it's a good idea to take the new gaskets out of the bags and let them relax so that you can fit them in here a little bit easier when you've got everything cleaned up. This job can be a little bit finicky, so take your time. Try not to scratch anything, but do a nice clean throw job. We'll start with pulling off the gasket first, the outside one at least. A pick might make this a little bit easier. So uh, just as easy as pulling it out like this most of the time. Sometimes you gotta dig them out. This one's coming out pretty easily. So set that old broken one aside. And uh, while we're at it, we'll pull out this inner one too, since we've got a replacement. This one looks intact, but we've got a new gasket anyway, so we'll remove this one. 
Um, next, we'll, uh, we'll do a little bit of scraping. It depends on what exactly you wanna get done on this. You're working in small spaces, so use a tool that makes sense. So we'll carve off this stuff here. Be very careful not to scar any of the surfaces that you wanna be using for sealing in the future. So we can cut this off the front too. Maybe able to pull that off, nope. There's really no good way to do this. Just work carefully and take your time. Use the tools that make sense. Don't force anything out. Just be patient. Whatever you're working on, make sure that when you're finished, it is all gone because you want it down to a nice clean surface where the new gasket's gonna be. It doesn't matter if it's old pieces of, of the gasket that we pulled off or the RTV that got globbed on there in the past. You wanna be all the way down to a, a clean surface by the time you're done. So we're cleaning this up now. The best tool we found to use was actually just a, uh, a soft bristle brush to get in there and grind the, uh, the debris down. Uh, so we've got it nice and clean. Trouble has become that getting this round gasket to stick in the channel here is, is a real challenge. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit it with some brake cleaner so that the channel is super, super clean. Then we're gonna use something called a gasket tack. It's basically rubber cement uh, to glue it in place for now so that when we flip it over onto the engine, it doesn't fall out. Um, it's gonna take a little bit more time and it's an extra step, but sometimes it's the only way to get it done. So with this gasket tack, you wanna spray it onto both sides. You wanna spray it onto the channel and onto the gasket and let it set up for like 30 to 45 seconds and then put it on. So we're gonna start with the inside gasket to test and then we'll move to the outside gasket. So. Uh, just like this. It's colored red so you can trace exactly where, where you're uh, spraying it on. All right, so now I'll move on to uh, the gasket side. So now we're spraying down the gasket side. Make sure to get both sides because you don't really know sometimes which weighs down on these, especially on, uh, sym on symmetrical gaskets. All right, and it's already getting pretty sticky. I can feel it. So uh, we'll let that set for another couple of seconds and uh, try to install it. Now, let's try to lay this new gasket in. It's nice and sticky, so it should, should stay put. Might pull my gloves off, actually. Sometimes getting these gaskets to stay on the head is the hardest part of the job and it can be a little bit frustrating, but like I said before, just take your time. There's no rush to get this job done. All right, that seems to work pretty well, and I think that'll hold when we turn the valve cover over. So we're gonna go ahead and do that with the other gasket too. So I've put this piece of wood under the valve cover gasket because when I spray it on the outside edge, I'm, I don't wanna get it all over the, my table. I don't want my table to be all sticky. So now we can work on the edge of this just like we did on the inside. Spray a nice little bead on the edge. And let that sit. While that's setting up, we'll move over to the gasket. Spray that down too. Just like the inside, we're gonna coat both sides of this one, just to be sure. All right, we'll set that aside for about 30 seconds, let it set up, and then we'll install it into the valve cover. Okay, so with this valve cover, we've got some little half moon pieces that we can line up over here and use that as our starting point. Sort of press that in and work around from there. And uh, just work your way around. You've got uh, plenty of time with this glue. It'll stay sticky for a long time, so no real rush. While you're watching me struggle with this, bear in mind that this valve cover gasket on this Saab is probably about as difficult as it's gonna get. 
Most of the time, they're nice flat gaskets. They sit on the head easily, and uh, you can just drop the valve cover right on top. So we've got this pretty well seated in, and now we can clean off the head and install this and uh, go from there. Now that we're back to the engine, I'm just finishing cleaning up the ceiling surface so that we can get a nice uh, seal for all this new gasket. And it's looking pretty good, so we'll get going on buttoning this bad boy back up. So we've had uh, some time to let this set up while we're working on the engine, and we're just gonna double check that these gaskets aren't gonna drop out when we transfer it. So here's the ultimate test, just to lift it up and turn it over. And I don't think they're going anywhere, so we're good. So what we've got here is some silicon RTV and we're gonna use this as directed in the maintenance manual. What this is used for is basically to seal up any of the hard spots, the hard edges that are in this head. So uh, I'm, I'm gonna reference this and put a bead down exactly where it tells me to. We're gonna start on this corner here, and it tells me to start on this corner and run it up and over the side, so that's how we're gonna do it. Just about like this. This will seal all by itself. It'll cure in air, so we should get going on the other spots. Here, we'll start on this next one up here on this front corner. It's pretty simple, just straight across and down. And up over to the other side. Now we'll move to the back of the car. Keep in mind, when you're using RTV, you only have a couple minutes to work, so make sure that you get it in place and get going on installing your valve cover. So we've got ours ready to go. We'll just drop it right on top. All right, let's throw a couple of bolts in and we'll check to make sure everything is square. So we're going to install all of these bolts first at uh, just a finger tight level. These bolts have a torque spec and a pattern, so you're going to want to follow that recommendation. No reason to do it wrong now that you've gone so far in order to get it right. Make sure to uh, pay attention to your guide on your piece of cardboard that you drew up. No, oh, it'd be awfully silly to have drawn that up and use the wrong bolt in the wrong hole. So we're just tightening these down a little bit before we get to the torque wrench portion of the experience. We use that torque wrench to get to the final figures and tighten everything down to, uh, to the spec that Saab recommends. So at this level, you just want it to be tight, but not too tight, because you're gonna to get to that final correct tightness with the, uh, the torque wrench. And using a socket wrench is gonna be a heck of a lot easier than using a torque wrench, so this will save you some time. All right, we're gonna go ahead and torque down all these bolts now, like in the pattern that we talked about earlier. We're gonna use this torque wrench, it's a beam type. When you use this kind of wrench, you wanna hold it from here, at the pivot point so that the gauge reads correctly. Uh, these things are pretty inexpensive and dead, dead reliable. So uh, it's, it's a good, easy way to get a torque wrench in your hands. So we'll start from here. We're using a Saab torque spec here, which is exactly 11 foot pounds. So that's what we're torquing it down to. You gotta be careful because that's not a heck of a lot on a car. Like I said before, we're gonna start with a spiral pattern. We'll uh, get this one next. Oh, that one's a little bit loose, so we're going to have to torque it down. We're going to tighten it down a bit. As you uh, tighten it down, you might have to go back in and uh, tighten some of them up as you go. So that is about 11 there. I'll go to this one next. And that's 11 there. Now we'll head on to this side. So now we are just wrapping up this job. As a brief recap, we've pulled the valve cover off, scraped all the old crappy gasket off, 
cleaned all the surfaces, put a new gasket on, we laid some RTV in the nooks and crannies of the top of the head, and then we torqued down the valve cover. You gotta do that twice to make sure that you get it seated in nice and properly. Now we've added all the wires and vacuum tubes back on. Now all you gotta do is go drive it around. If you see any leaks on the car, you blew it. You're gonna have to do it again. If you don't see any leaks, good job. If you have any questions about this job, shoot me an email. If we like it, we'll pick you up for a video chat.